Well, hey, Adventure Club members, good to see you. I'm very glad to be teaching your next lesson today. You've had a lot of exciting lessons so far. In your first lesson, you learned about the church, how it wasn't a building, but it was you and many other people that follow God, and you make up the church. Your next lesson, you learned about uh, the church is like a body, that your body has many different parts. They look different. They do different things, but they're all important and they're all essential, and that we as the body of Christ all have different roles and different things to do, but they're all absolutely important. Last week, your lesson was about baptism and how you've been baptized to show that you've died to your old self and now you've risen again to live in Christ and serve him. Today, our lesson is going to be about the family of God. And I'm sure that most of you know what a family is. You're part of one. You have a mom and a dad. You may have brothers and sisters. Uh, those are your siblings and you love them, right? I'm sure you fight with them now and then, but deep down you love your brothers and your sisters. And if they needed help, you would take care of them. All right. And uh, you may have friends outside your family, but your, your family is your closest to you. And it's very special to be part of a loving family. Okay. Today, I want to show you some pictures of children that did not have a family. Okay. They were orphans. Do you know what an orphan is? An orphan is someone that does not have a mom or dad to take care of them, okay? Some children are orphans because their parents have died. Some children are orphans because they were born in a poor country and their parents did not have the means to take care of them. And uh, some kids were abandoned because their parents couldn't afford to take care of them, all right? And I think the saddest of all, there's a lot of children around the world that were abandoned just because they had special needs. They didn't look right, or they had a disease, or they had something wrong with them that their parents just didn't want to take care of them. And they got rid of them, okay? Some of these children were even like left in a grocery store and abandoned, okay? All the, when these pictures were taken, all these children were orphans, okay? They had no family. Most lived in an orphanage. Some lived in decent orphanages. That's a home for children that, that don't have parents and they put all these kids together in a home. Some of them were okay and they, the orphanages took pretty good care of them. Some of the orphanages were very bad and the children were treated very poorly, okay? And worst of all, they had no mom or dad and they had no one that really loved them like a family would, okay? I wanna show you pictures of these children today. They aren't orphans anymore. They are in a family. They have a mom and a dad who love them with all their heart and provide everything they need and a lot of things they just want and don't necessarily need, okay? They have many, many brothers and sisters to love and play with and even fight with, okay? These children lived in different countries all over the world, including Bulgaria, Taiwan, Guatemala, China, Ethiopia, and even the United States. Now they are all in a family together and you have probably seen some of them at Taylor Creek Church. How did that happen? Because my wife and I adopted them. Okay? Adopting is a very special and amazing event where an orphan is legally added to a family and made a son or a daughter to parents who will love them and take care of them just like their own birth children. Okay? Even though these children were not born to me or my wife, They've been added to my family, and we love them just as much as our birth children. We have seven birth children, born to me and my wife, and 14 adopted children, and we all love them just as much as the others, okay? When they joined our birth children, they became brothers and sisters. Whatever happened in the past to them, or whatever special needs they have, doesn't matter anymore. They're my children. They will never be abandoned. They will always have a family that will love them and take care of them. What does that have to do with our lesson today? Okay. The reason I'm teaching you about adoption is because God wants to adopt you into his family. Now you might wonder why you need to be adopted. You, you probably have a family already, right? And why would you want to be adopted? Does God want to take you out of your family and put him into his family? No. Okay. And what is a family? Let's talk about this and what it means. God doesn't want to take you from your family and put you into his family. He wants to put you and your whole family in his family to be adopted by him. In fact, there's a neat story in the book of Acts about it, uh, the Apostle Paul. He was put in prison, and God sent an earthquake, 
and broke the jail open. But Paul and the prisoners did not use that opportunity to escape. They stayed there. The jailer who was in charge and would have been in big trouble if the prisoners would have escaped, he asked Paul after he saw this, he says, what can I do to be saved? God made such a, an impression on him that he wanted to be following God and, and, and following the same God that Paul was. So Paul told him to believe in Jesus Christ and he and his whole family would be saved. Okay, And that night, the jailer took Paul to his house so that he could preach the gospel to the jailer and his whole family so they could believe and be saved, okay? They were all adopted into God's family. Some of you may have family members that are already in God's family. You might have some family members that are not yet into God's family. God might use you to lead these people to be adopted by God, okay? And God invites everyone to come into his family. It doesn't matter who you are, what you've done, where you were born, what country you're from, what skin color you have, who is in your family. Jesus died for everyone, and he will forgive their sins and adopt them if they will put their faith in him and follow him, okay? And I just think that's such a special thing that not only does God save us from our sins, he doesn't stop there. He says, come, be my child. I want to be your father. I want to take care of you. God is a perfect father watching over us and leading us into his good plan for us. He loves us and wants what is best for us. He wants us to call him our father, and he wants to put us in a family with millions of other Christian brothers and sisters all around the world. If you went to another country right now, and you couldn't even speak the language of that country, if you found other Christians in that country, they would take care of you just like a brother or sister, because they are, okay? You are literally brothers and sisters with millions of people all around the world, okay? You're part of a huge family that's spread out all over the world and is growing every day. The Bible says that the family of God is like a large building with Christ as the chief cornerstone. Now, the cornerstone is a strong and straight stone that the rest of the building is built upon, okay? And the Bible says that Christ is our cornerstone, and we're all living stones being built on the foundation of Christ, okay? Now, as family members, how should we treat each other? Well, let's read what 1 Corinthians 1.10 tells us, okay? 1 Corinthians 1.10 tells us, here it is, I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree, and that there be no division among you, but that you be united in the same mind and in the same judgment, Okay. Now, does that mean we should all do exactly the same thing? No, it doesn't. In fact, like we just talked about earlier, we all do different things, and that's a strength of our family. We have many people doing many different things, and that's, and that's a great benefit. But what it does mean is that when it comes to the Bible and what God expects of us and what God teaches us, we should all be united around those things, okay? We should obey God's word, and we should encourage our brothers and sisters to do the same. First Peter 3.8 tells us to have a unity of mind, brotherly love, a tender heart, and a humble mind. In addition to obeying and agreeing with God's word, like Corinthians told us, okay, this means we should have a genuine love for one another. We're not jealous of each other. We're not looking to start an argument or a fight. We don't gossip about each other, okay? We build each other up. A tender heart means that you care about others and you look to help them or encourage them if they're sick or lonely or need help, okay? A humble mind means that we don't think we're better than anybody else. We don't look down on other people. We're not too proud to accept help. There may be times when God calls a brother or sister of Christ to come help you with something, and you need to say thank you for doing that. And someday you might help them when they need help. We should be humble and accept that, and we should be looking for opportunities to help others that need help in our family. To everybody in the world, but especially our brothers and sisters in Christ, okay? If we live this way and with each other, spending time with your big worldwide family is going to be something you're going to look forward to doing. You're going to love doing it. You're going to love coming to church. You're going to love coming to our adventure club when we're allowed to come and meet in the church again. You're going to be so excited to come and see all your brothers and sisters again. It's going to be great. Okay? It's coming soon. One final point. Adoption is permanent. My adopted children will never be separated from me by anything. 
Your adoption is permanent too. Jesus told the disciples that everyone that the Father gives to him, no one will be able to snatch them out of his hand. He'll keep every one of them, okay? Uh, I hope that'll make you just a little more thankful and, and help you understand more of the blessing that you have by being a child of the King. You're blessed by it now, and you'll be blessed by it for all eternity, okay? When you're with your, all your brothers and sisters in heaven together worshiping God and enjoying being together with no sin, no fighting, no pain, no sickness, no tears. We'll all be together as a great big family, and it's going to be awesome, okay? So enjoy it now while you're here, and also look forward to it while you're in heaven, okay? One final quick point. I hope that some of you will grow up and want to adopt orphans too. It will be a blessing to you and the child you save, and it'll give you a special insight into God adopting and choosing you, okay? And it'll make God happy too. Hey, thanks for listening to me. Look forward to seeing you next week. Keep tuning into the Adventure Club, and I'll see you at church soon. Thank you, guys and girls.